as a board operator. An alarm flood is an overwhelming experience. It's hundreds of alarms and no rhyme or reason. For an operator, he's dealing with billions of dollars worth of equipment, potential to damage not only the environment, but people. Data overload is a huge issue, for sure. We want to make alarms come in at a manageable level for the operator. That's the key, so that he can prevent process safety incidents. I've been in CF approaching 40 years. When I first started, the control room was an electronically operated panel, so the maximum number of alarms would be approximately 180, but typical would be 25 to 30. Over the years, the control room has evolved with the installation of the computer control systems in plants throughout the world. DCS is a distributed control system. With DCS, it's provided us a way to look at these plants at a deeper level than ever before. Essentially, what these systems do is they run the entire plant. We get inputs from the field. That might be a pressure, a temperature, a level, a flow. And then it makes a decision as to where that is in relation to where the operator needs it to be. But with every one of those new looks into the plant, brings multiple alarms. The problem with receiving too many alarms is taking that information and responding correctly to it, knowing where you should focus your attention. I've been doing instrumentation and controls for 15 years now, and alarm management and alarm problems were starting to become a big focus in industry. When the plant starts to go into an upset situation, what used to be 30 to 40 alarms that would ring in, there are now three to 400 alarms that ring in. And every time they did that, the operators were faced with this alarm flood. As a board operator, alarm flood is an overwhelming experience. When you have a flood of alarms come at you, your mind is racing in many different directions and you're trying to figure out what caused it, where do I go from here, how do I get things to a safe place. We want to make alarms come in at a manageable level for the operator. Really, that's the key. The end goal is to make the operator's life easier so that he can prevent process safety incidents. There's two schools of international guidelines to help with alarm rationalization process, and we utilize both of them. We work with the consultant to develop the alarm philosophy, and that document is the foundation for any rationalization process. The alarm philosophy is really important. The philosophy is essentially how you're gonna treat the alarms in your facility. It becomes really the foundation for your whole program in order to get everything consistent. There's a couple things that we were looking for. Does the alarm require an action? The second was, is it a redundant alarm? As in, when this process condition occurs, are there multiple alarms gonna come in telling you the same thing? And the big piece of the philosophy is trying to figure out what actually is an alarm. It sounds like a simple question, you know, but it's really the key to then starting the rest of your program. We had an alarm that told us it was midnight because at midnight, all of our integrators or our totalizers changed back to zero. So we had an alarm to say, okay, it's midnight. Our philosophy says if there really is no action required, then really and truly it's not an alarm. We wanted to condense those, remove as many as possible. So if we reduced our total alarms by 25%, which was a huge improvement. Alarm priorities are huge for us because it focuses the operator's attention on the most important situation and it focuses the attention where he can make an improvement. With alarm standards, you should have high priority alarms, medium priority, low priority. We want to set up the board operator to get an alarm, not only to tell them what's wrong, but to tell them the priority that they have to respond. If we assign a higher priority to a pre-warning where I can intervene and hopefully correct the situation before we lose a piece of equipment or have people getting hurt, that has a lot more value to me as a board operator. What the alarm consultants helped us to understand was you have to move to a predictive alarm system and by being predictive you give yourself time to then prevent that consequence. You have to look at every single alarm on its own basis and its own value. It took us over a year to develop our philosophy and it was a cross-departmental team. We had some maintenance people, some instrumentation people, we had process engineering involved and a couple of operations people. 
I remember we would have these discussions where people were saying, this is the most important alarm in the plant, and other people were saying, no, this is actually a low priority because they'd never experienced that. The discussions get pretty heated because everybody has a different opinion. Conversations got quite interesting. There is a commitment to get this thing kicked off and to get it worked all the way through the process, but the benefit is huge. The plants run steadier, the operators are more focused where they need to be, and it's just a safer place all the way around. The feedback's been positive from the other operators. They understand the importance of it and information at the right time. And it was uh, very fulfilling to see it completed and implemented in the plant because it brings great value to our site and I think it would bring great value to other sites as well. Really at the end of the day, what I'm most uh, happy with is that the operator at the panel is getting better information and able to do his job with less stress. It's the system that's actually gonna last the test of time. It's something that I'm quite proud of. At CF, at CF, at CF, at CF, we do it right. At CF Medicine Hat, we do it right.